What's going on, Fantasy Baseball fans? I'm your host, Hussein the Brain, and you're watching The Couch. This here's a Fantasy Baseball guru, Andrew Eggers. Today we have the biggest video, well, most of you will think is the biggest video, to get you ready for the 2015 draft. Welcome to our 2015 Fantasy Baseball Sleepers video. Now, just about everybody knows what a sleeper is, but a quick definition, a sleeper derives from the slang term when a player gets slept on in the draft, where owners somehow don't value the guy enough to draft him, but when we come up with a sleeper, we think he should be drafted a little earlier, and we value him more than the consensus out there. We're just gonna go right into it. Let's start off with sleepers. The first one we have is Leonis Martin. Yeah, this center fielder for the Texas Rangers is gonna get a lot of run in the leadoff spot this season, which he was hitting more towards the bottom of the lineup last season. He actually is a 264 career hitter, so he gets on base fairly often as well. Not bad, but he stole 67 stolen bases within the last two seasons. So that's an awesome stat for a guy who's gonna be hitting leadoff who's probably going to score a lot more runs than he did last season in a pretty decent Texas Ranger lineup. Okay, next sleeper on our list is Justin Verlander. And I bet you didn't expect to see him in this video, being as though he's got a couple Cy Young awards under his belt. But last year, he really fell off. He had a four and a half ERA. He did have a 15 and 12 record, but he lost command of his breaking pitches. And that's really what you know contributed to the high ERA. But this season, he's put on 20 pounds of muscle, in the offseason, he's also trying to get command of his breaking pitches back, which he's shown fairly well in his first two spring starts. Kind of fell back in the last spring start, but I believe that he could revamp his game, if you will, and get back to not the same, but a close level of where he was just a couple years ago. So his average draft position is 141, which I think brings him around to the 15th round in a 10-man league. Now, in a 10-man league, where would you take him? I wouldn't take him before the 12th. I don't want to reach for the guy. I still think he's got more value than his average draft position at this point. Uh, but I'd say the 12th round is a fair bet. Next up, we have AJ Pollock. Yeah, this guy actually had a really good season last year, although it was cut short because he broke his hand after getting hit by a pitch. He actually missed three months of the season. So it wasn't cut short as much as it was just the centerpiece was taken out. Um, but he did hit over 300 and he will hit in the leadoff spot this year for the Diamondbacks and play in the outfield. So I really am high on this guy. I think he's gonna have a dynamic season and ultimately really contribute to your fantasy team's success as long as you draft him. Next sleeper, Will Myers. Yeah, talking about a guy who kind of fell from grace when we talked about Justin Verlander just a bit ago, Will Myers really fell off the face of the earth last season and then he got traded to the San Diego Padres in this off season as they overhauled their entire offense. They have a decent, if not above average offense going into the season. And I think that he's gonna to contribute to some of their success. He's got pop. I think he could hit around 280, maybe 290. He hit right around 300 as a rookie just a couple seasons ago. So just imagine, this kid's only 24 years old and still has lots of potential. Um, I wouldn't sleep on him if I was you. Up next on our sleeper list is starting pitcher Colin McHugh. Yeah, this guy, he actually was a rookie last season and pitched to a 2.73 ERA um, for the Houston Astros nonetheless. Now, when you see a pitcher from the Houston Astros pitch that well, um, you get a little weary because you think he can't reproduce that this season. But I honestly think that this guy has a lot of potential. He's got a nasty curveball. Um, he keeps the pitches down for the most part, and he, and he hits his spots. Um, I don't think he's going to pitch to the same level he pitched last year in terms of his ERA, but I'd say low threes in the ERA category, maybe 12 to 15 wins on a improving Astros ball club. So I have no problem taking him in the later rounds. Uh, up next, let's talk about the outfielder Shin Su Chu. And this guy's from Korea? Yes, from South Korea. He actually signed a huge deal um, with the Texas Rangers last offseason. I believe seven years, $130 million. So there was big expectations for him last year. But he had bone spurs in both his ankle and his elbow, which really hindered his success or lack thereof. Now this year, he's had both... Um, the ankle and the elbow, uh, the bone chips have been removed. He's coming into spring training, fully healthy and expects to have a pretty big year um, in a pretty decent lineup. So this guy gets on base a lot, so he's gonna score some runs. He's also got some speed and he could hit for average. And tell us why you have Yasmani Grandal on your sleepers list. 
Well, Matt Kemp got shipped to the San Diego Padres this offseason from the Dodgers. And in exchange, um, somewhat of the centerpiece coming back to the Dodgers was Yasmani Grandal. And he's a switch hitting catcher. He's still young. He's only 26. He's had a lot of injury um, issues in the last couple seasons, so he hasn't played a full season. But he's got a lot of lot of potential i mean he can hit for some average he can hit for some pop he's probably going to platoon a little bit with aj ellis so he won't be in there for say 150 games but i think his upside is enough to take him in the later rounds especially as your backup catcher so we're talking how how late in the draft here towards the very end or yeah depending on how many roster spots you guys have i mean he would probably go in a 10-man league towards say the 19th 20th round something so that's is that would that come out to basically your last pick or close to it just it really depends on how large your roster sizes i've honestly seen anywhere from you know 22 to 26 roster spots so i mean that's 22 or 26 rounds that you're having to draft for so we'll just say in in the late late rounds the twilight of the draft okay next up on our sleepers list Aries Mendy Alcantara. Yeah, this youngster, he actually just debuted last year. Um, I believe he played around 70 games. Yeah, I, I know he finished with 10 home runs and I think eight stolen bases in that short time. He'll probably play a little bit of second base and a, and a little bit of outfield. Um, and actually the Cubs are, are really deep with young talent at this point, especially in their infield. They'll find a way for this guy to get in the lineup Although he only hit around 205 in the 70 games I mentioned he played last season, this kid's got a lot of potential still. He's young, still learning the ropes in the big leagues. Um, and I think he's got a lot of potential long term. Next up, Travis Denard. Yeah, the Mets young catcher. Um, he's still got a lot of potential, I believe, too. He did hit 13 home runs last season, and seven of those came after the All Star break. His batting average was under 250, uh, but he was a lot more aggressive at the plate in the second half of last season. I think he's got a lot of long-term potential. The Mets are gonna plug him in almost every day behind the plate. Um, so look for him also as say a backup catcher if you're a, if you're not able to get Grandal. And our last sleeper on this list is Marcus Seaman. Yeah, the Oakland A's new starting shortstop figures to be um, fairly good this season and he's still young as well. He actually got shipped over to the A's in the Jeff Samarza trade in the off season. Um, he did bat, I think, 234 last season, but he did hit 273, I think, when he got called up in September. So he showed some improvement after spending a couple months in the minor leagues. He also was in a utility role for the White Sox last year. So you can imagine, I mean, when you go to work every day and you don't know exactly what you're going to be doing, in this case, he doesn't know exactly which position he's going to be playing or if he's going to be playing at all, it leaves a little uncertainty up in the air. But when you know exactly what you're going to do every day for your work, in this case, he's going to play shortstop every day for the Oakland Athletics, he's a lot more comfortable in my mind going into the season knowing that. And I think you're going to notice that in the numbers. Um, also, the Oakland A's lineup isn't too bad, and I expect them to take some pitches, and he's going to be a part of that, get on base and score some runs. So overall, I think he's a great addition to your team. He's also going to have position eligibility at second base and third base for the time being, so that's going to add extra value to him. Where would you take him? My last pick. I would definitely take him with the last pick. He's a good guy. He's versatile, like I was mentioning. He's not going to hit for a great average or a lot of home runs, but he's serviceable. He's definitely serviceable, especially when there's injuries on your squad. You want to have a guy that can play multiple positions. So he's not getting drafted in some leagues? In some leagues, he's not getting drafted, and you might find him to be your first waiver wire pickup. And we'll have some videos for waiver wires coming in, in the future as well. Um, so you may hear his name more than once this season. Well, that wraps up our list of sleepers. Make sure you guys check out the previous video we just did about our rankings, and we'll have more videos to get you ready for the 2015 draft, more content on fancycouch.com. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, like, comment on the video, and we'll see you on the next one.